I never chose this life in a wheelchair. And it's a struggle. When I got like this, I didn't let nobody know for about a year. Because I didn't think it was permanent. I hadn't sunk in that it was permanent. We've all been raised to survive and that we could do anything. Our father, when we were young, we had to work hard. But his vocabulary, there was never, I can't do this. It's always you can. I was 18 when I was diagnosed with the muscular dystrophy. Um, I've always eaten right. I've never done any kind of drugs. I've never drank. I've never smoked. I just tried to stay as active as I could and to stay as busy working, doing what I had to, to survive in life, to stay healthy. 911, where's your emergency? Hi, there's a car accident on 66. A woman is hurt. There is somebody hurt? Yes, her legs are smashed. My femur came out through my leg when they were doing the Jaws of Life. I was conscious. I remember a guy coming up and pulling my arm, um, Mr. Carl, pulled my arm out, put a tourniquet on it. And I remember when they were loading me in the chopper. I said, man, this is going to kill me, threatening, but this is. But it was about three years total with surgeries back and forth. Um, and I'd fallen. My neighbors have come and picked me up. I've had to go back in. I broke both ankles again. Um, but you just keep on going. I was because she was laughing, sitting on the tailgate of her truck. Nothing happened to her. She was on drugs. She's never contacted me. And I would like to look her in the face one time, 20 years later, 21 years later. I just ask her. Those drugs are worth putting somebody the way I am. But from what I understand, she's still on drugs, so it really doesn't matter. She got a $15 ticket for failure to yield the right away. Three weeks later, from what I understand, she had some issues, but she survived them. But she's still walking around. She's still feeding herself, able to put herself in bed, able to cook for herself. The love of my neighbors, um, they all came and checked on me, my friends and my family. They were all here to help me because I wasn't ready to give up. I had things I really wanted to achieve in life. And um, I never chose this life in a wheelchair. And it's a struggle. My brother that was 11 months older than I, he had been in a wheelchair with muscular dystrophy for about 40 years. And when I got like this, I didn't let nobody know for about a year. And he finally come over and he goes, I knew something was wrong. And he walked me through every day of being a quadriplegic. He said, it's going to be real hard. He said, you're going to find out who your friends are. He said, but you got to make it.
because I didn't think it was permanent. I hadn't sunk in that it was permanent. And um, I just didn't want nobody to know because I thought I could fight it and survive it. In 2016, I lost a kidney. 2018, I was given some medicine that didn't react. It blew out my colon, and I went septic. I was on a bed in the trach, and um, for 51 days, I was in the hospital. They told me I wouldn't come out without the vent in the tray. I told them I couldn't sit on my porch with a vent or a tray where I couldn't talk to nobody. And so it was very hard. But on a Thursday, I believe it was September the 28th, I told the doctor we were pulling that trach out and I was going to breathe on my own. I think I breathed about 12 hours on my own. Very hard. And I had to get put back on the trach. And that night I prayed and prayed. And I said, God, I'm going to do it tomorrow. And it's going to come out. I've got to go home by October the 3rd. I've got a pumpkin patch to put up, and I got field trips scheduled. So it was hard, but I did it. And on Tuesday morning, the doctor come in and he goes, well, what are we going to do today? I said, I think it's time. We're going to take the trach out. He goes, oh, you know you won't be able to talk for a little while. I said, okay. Well, he took it out, and I was able to talk right away. God has been my co-pilot through all of this. April the 8th, 2015, I had a stroke in my bedroom. I actually tripped and had the stroke after I fell, I think. Nobody came in. My workers were supposed to come in every day check on me. That day, for some reason, they didn't come in until after 11 o'clock, and they found me. Thank God, because the fireman said I only had about 25 more minutes, and they undone the side rail of my ramp on the side of my bed, and they got me out, laid me on the bed, and they pried my shoulders and my legs sat down, put me on a stretcher, and carried me to the hospital. I'm the bag lady. I've got a cloth in me, and I've got a catheter. I eat when someone gets it ready for me and feeds me. I get a drink when I ask for it. I can't do my own cooking. I can't do my own cleaning. I can't get in bed. I have to have someone change my bag, do my laundry. If I want to go somewhere, I have to have someone to take me. I have to have someone shower you, get you dressed. If you wear makeup, you have to put your makeup on. You don't lift your arms, so you can't brush your teeth. You have no life. I would love to get in bed myself. Sometimes at 63 years old, you want to lay down and just rest. But I can't do that. And our society is very expensive. For a handicapped person, 
um, take a lot of medical equipment, wheelchairs, $20,000 for a wheelchair. That's absolutely ridiculous. I have a nurse that comes in once a week. I have a young girl that was in my summer camp. She came to the hospital to help take care of me. She moved in with me. Christy works the night that she's not working to put me in bed. As a quadriplegic, you can't be on a time schedule because you're always counting on someone else. You always have to depend on someone else. So your time doesn't matter. And I'm blessed to have the people around me that can get me up because it's not easy to lift someone 160 pounds to get them up out of bed. I do have, I can stand up some on my legs if they get me up high enough, but I can never take a step. Why me? What did I ever do? And there's no amount of money that can get your help. I know before I was this way, I would see someone in the grocery store with a cart. I would always help them. Or the elderly, I would help them to the groceries in the car. You don't see that much anymore. Um, people aren't the same. To get someone to stay with you at night, it's very expensive. So I stay a lot by myself. Um, of course, I have someone put me in bed. Thank God for Alexa. I feel that if I would have had Alexa when I fell, I wouldn't be where I'm at today because it's connected to my phone and I can say, Alexa, call whoever, and it would call and someone could have found me. During the night or during the day, if someone's not here, um, I find myself hungry or needing something to drink. And before I got the electric wheelchair, I was in a manual electric, a uh, manual wheelchair. And when the farm closed at two o'clock, I was on the back porch. And I would be there whether it started raining, um, cold, wind blowing, thirsty, hungry. Needing to go to the bathroom before I had the cloth to me and the cat litter. But there was nothing I could do. I was there. My kids aren't interested in nothing I do. They're not supportive. It hurts. But I'm not going to have nobody control my life. I've only seen my granddaughter, um, the one that lives here. She comes here occasionally. And I believe a lot of the situation is my kids always saw me as the backbone. I could do anything that I put my mind to. Now they don't see that person. They see a needy woman. But it's okay. I've accepted that. 
I have, um, that's one thing this farm brings. A lot of smiles, a lot of lifetime memories. And I can see I have a lot of special needs that come through here. And it always seems like on a day that you're down, and you think, I can't do this no more, you see a group home come through with special needs. You say, thank God, I'm okay. Run. I gave my license up, and that was probably the last of my independence. I've always drove trucks or Land Rovers. I have a truck in my garage, a uh, dually. I used to hook up my horse trailer, haul my horses, go to the livestock markets, uh, haul cattle. All that's gone. I had to trade my Land Rover in for a Dodge with a ramp. But it's not the most comfortable car. Um, but got the ramp. Gets me from point A to point B. And um, it's a blessing. Last week, the ramp quit. And I was in a panic because I didn't have the money to fix it. But it just so happened, a friend of another friend came and he looked at it and it wasn't as bad as I thought. People need to go do the things they can do now because these golden years, they're not golden, they're pretty rusty. So... You need to go ahead and do it now. Enjoy life. And worry about tomorrow when it comes. I get up in the mornings. Zoe gets me up. And she gets me dressed. They feed me breakfast, whoever's here. Um... I roll out on my back porch and I start delegating. Um, if I see things that's not done, I don't like it because everybody here has been here working for LaPorte Farms. They know how I am. I'm very, very picky about the farm, how it looks, how it's presented to people, because I don't ever want anyone to say, oh, it's dirty because she's in a wheelchair. I don't think a lot of people realize that I am a quadriplegic because I go out um, I've just started maybe three or four times going to a restaurant because I didn't want anybody to see me being fed. Um, so I didn't go. Well, I am. Still hoping that I can. Um, I started writing a book, Changing of the Leaves, about my life. 
I got married young. Um, and when I was in the nursing home slash rehab, I got hooked on a movie on A&E about Fairbanks, Alaska. And I said, well, you know, I'll finish that book when I make my trip to Alaska. I've never drank a beer in my life or tasted one. So I said, you know, maybe I'll drink my first beer in one of those little pubs and I'll finish my book. That's my goal to continue my plan. My trip to Alaska is definitely put on hold because of financial reasons. Um, it's not cheap to be this way. This farm costs a lot of money. This is this is my life. Probably eight to ten thousand dollars because I would have to carry um, a caretaker with me or two would have to go with me and it wouldn't be a trip that I would be able to go on say for a week or two I've got to finish my book before I die my book Changing of the Leaves I probably have about eight chapters, probably 150 pages. Seems like every day something new comes up. Um, but I will get it done. I will get it done. Some days is good and some days aren't. You just got to hope. Tomorrow's going to be better. I like to be here on the grounds at 8 o'clock in the morning. And it really frustrates me when I don't get out till 10, 10, 15. And life is just better every day. Love life. Do everything you can do. Tomorrow may not come. So enjoy it. Thank God for everything you've been able to accomplish. And keep on moving. Don't stop. Don't feel sorry for yourself. Pull up your bootstraps and keep on going. This is the eternal human project. I am fossil number 292.